These projects are designed to cultivate multiple skill sets that complement a series of videos created for the purpose of acquiring a foundational knowledge of the Python programming language. These projects will cover coding both console-based and GUI applications. TK Enter is a Python binding to the TK GUI toolkit, and its framework is built into Python's standard library, so it does not require the installation of any additional modules. This makes TK Enter a convenient choice for building graphical interfaces for Python applications. All source code in these videos is available at the one byte at a time GitHub repository. You will find a link to the code used in each video beneath it, in its description and comments section. You may use these links to download the source code. This Python project is a tic-tac-toe game. And it'll give you practice uh, using lists, iterables, arrays, uh, loop type structures, decision structures, and just coding some basic game logic. How would you code a little bit of logic for an NPC or the computer to play against its human opponent? Okay, so I have several methods here and several imports that we'll make use of. We have a global, easy starts out as false, and we'll make use of that. We'll enable the player to modify their, the level of difficulty of the game if they want uh, later on. We have a game board, right? And this is a list object or an array. And we're thinking of a tic-tac-toe board, so uh, you know we, we need to have nine spaces. So three rows and three columns. And it would be, but it would be indexed zero through eight, right? Remember that fence post or that off by one issue you have when using uh, lists or arrays. So the first space, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and the seventh, the eighth, and the ninth, but indexed zero through eight. Okay, the number of squares nine. The player piece, haven't decided yet, is it gonna be X or O? The computer piece, and then the, the current player, will that be X or O? So we're gonna go call a method introduction. And when we're done, it's going to return a value, and we'll assign that to player piece. So let's go take a look at introduction, and then we'll come back. So we call introduction, first or second, intelligence, and player piece. We're going to get some information. We display, you know, here's the game, the basic rules. We'll ask the player, hey, do you want your NPC opponent to be intelligent or simple? If it's intelligent, I mean, tic-tac-toe is still a simple game either way, but we'll do a little bit more to make it more challenging. Whereas if they choose simple, we'll do a little bit less and then the player will have more of an advantage. And we want to do some masking, right? Some validate this input. So if they give us some gobbledygook, you know, Applejack or cheeseburger, we don't want that. We just want them to tell us I or S. So we keep them in a holding pattern, this while true loop until they give us you know, we don't want garbage, we want useful input. So that's the idea behind that while well, true loop. And, you know, in this case, both of these have to be true. If intelligence is not equal to I, and intelligence is not equal to S, okay? And we'll take their input. If it's I, okay, your opponent will be more difficult to beat, and easy will be false. And it that was the initial value of easy, but, uh, you know, they could change within the loop. Like, let's say that they played another game. In that case, we want to set it here, set the value, not depend on that global value up above. Otherwise, okay, your NPC opponent will be easier to beat. And then the value of easy becomes true, you know, either way. That is an invalid response. Anything else they give us, if it's not I, if it's not S, that's an invalid response. We'll do the same thing here. Do you want to make the first move? Well, the only valid options are yes and no. So we keep them in a holding pattern until they give us the valid input that we're looking for. Convert it to lower, they shouldn't have to worry about whether it's uppercase or lowercase. But if yes, okay, you're the first move, and then they become X. If not, okay, the computer can take the first move, and they become O. Either way. Otherwise, that was an invalid response. And then finally, we're just gonna hold in, our, in this loop here, say, hey, press enter to continue. And we'll just get, assign that value to null because we don't need it. We're just holding them in that menu and that part of the game or the program until they press enter to continue by the input statement. 
Then we will return player piece, which now they've already chosen here. Understand? So then we go back up. All right, so that's what introduction did. And then what? If player piece evaluates the X, the computer is O. Otherwise, the computer piece is X, all right? So it depends on what the player chose to go first or to let the computer go first, decides who is X, decides who is O. Now we're going to display the game board and that just calls another method. All right, so display. And what is game board? That's up here, right? So game board takes a parameter, an argument as board, and we'll display the game board here. So we just go down here and that array that we pass in, it's just gonna take that entire argument as an array and it's gonna display whatever's there, an X or an O. In this case, at first it's empty. There's nothing there. Neither the player nor the computer has made a move. So there's neither X nor O on the board. So the first time through we call display board it's empty. But as we populate it with values in the future, as we progress and play through the game, it will contain X's and O's and their respective squares, okay? So we display the game board. There's our empty game board at first. And then we're going to, we have a while true loop here. And so we're going to check for our winner. And we're gonna pass in game board, right? Our array and squares. Okay, squares is nine. So check for a winner, evaluates to no. So we don't have a winner, neither, neither the computer nor the player has won yet. Then the current player will be the current player, which is set to either X or O, depending on how it iterates to the game and who chose to go first, uh, that value will change, okay? So check for a winner. What does that do? Let's go down to check for a winner. Check for a winner takes our array, right? That's our tic-tac-toe word, and our number of squares, nine. And what do we do? Use Python array list to encode all possible winning patterns. Remember with tic-tac-toe, you have to get three in a row. So you've got the, the, the possibilities here are three horizontal, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those are the three horizontal ways that you might win. The vertical ways that you might win, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You know, think of the grid, Python, and then vertically, you could go 0, 4, 8, and 2, 4, 6. So we have to represent in code, in, in logic, uh, the ways that we can win this game. These are the winning rows, and we'll compare, we'll search these pat for these patterns to see if, if there's a winner for either the player, uh, X or O, or the computer, X or O, okay? Total rows is 8, because remember, you subtract 1. With, with arrays, with list objects, there's that fence post issue where it's always off by one. So yes, there's there's nine elements, but we don't count one to nine, we count zero to eight, all right? So total rows and then our columns, our, our rows and columns. If a row has three values that are the same, we have a winner. We'll either return X or O as the winner or a tie and end the game. In this case, if, if nobody wins and all the squares and X's are filled up, okay? Or else we'll return N and keep playing the game. So how do we do that? For row and range of the total rows, right? The total rows is how many? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Index zero through seven, but eight rows. So for each row and range, starting at zero and going to total rows, the last element would, would be seven. We're gonna go through, and if our board, right, that's our array, winning rows, row zero, and row is gonna change. Row is gonna be incremented, but these values are gonna remain the same as we iterate through our loop here, okay? So we're gonna compare winning rows. All right, so the first time through, it's this column here. All right, so if board winning row zero is not equal to, you wanna make sure it's not blank. All right, it can't be blank. And if winning rows row zero evaluates to board winning rows row one, all right, so zero and one, so you know, the horizontal, the, 
you know, in this case, the row is the same, but the column, we're comparing columns. So if zero evaluates to be the same as, as one, and then one evaluates to be the same as two, well, what we're checking is, is there an X, you know, or, or an O, could be X, could be O, but is the same character at both zero, column one, one, column two, and two, column three, and that first row, okay? And we're checking for a win there, okay? And then if, if all these conditions are met and there's a match, we'll return whatever character is stored at that location. Otherwise, we iterate to the next, and we're going to go through and compare the next set of values. Well, if all of these were not all X or all O, are all of these all X or all O? Are all of these all X or all O? In other words, do we have a winning combination of either X or O? And that's all we're doing in this first for loop here. And if so, we'll, you know, we'll return what that character was, whether it be the computer, whether it be the, the player. If we don't have a winner, check for a possible tie. So no empty spaces evaluates to be true. And if, if we don't have any of those winning combinations, then what's the other possibility? The possibility would be a tie, in which case all the squares have been consumed and neither the player nor the computer wins. So check to see if empty spaces are left on the board to see if that's the case, right? If, if everything's been filled, game over. It's, it's a tie, right? So if any of those spaces are blank, we're just going to go cycle through or iterate through the entire array that was passed in. And if any of those are blank, no empty spaces is false. Otherwise, no empty spaces remains true. And if it remains true, we'll return T for a tie. Okay? Otherwise, nobody wins. Uh, you know, not a tie and empty spaces remain on board, so we're going to keep playing, and we will return n. <laughs> okay? So the possibilities in this method and this function, either X or O, computer or player, got a winning combination, and we return the character of the winner here. Remember when you hit a return statement, that function or that method in Python ends, or Okay, no empty spaces is set to true. We're going to look and make sure that we can still keep playing. In order to keep playing, there has to be at least one empty space left. And uh, if there isn't, or I mean, it should be if there is, no empty spaces will be set to false and we'll continue to play. But if no empty spaces remains true, we'll return T. We have a tie, game over. There's no more empty spaces, so you can't continue to play. Otherwise, okay, nobody's won yet. No winning combination. And there's still empty spaces left, so the computer and the player can keep playing, and we return n. Okay? So that's that's what happened so far. And now let's go back. That's, as we call, check for a winner. And then it's going to return, you know, a winner, x or o, or t for a tie, or n to keep playing. So as long as that method keeps returning, you know, the return value evaluates to be n, we will keep playing. So the current player will display, it's going to toggle back and forth, right? It'll go back and forth between the computer and the player. That's how you play tic-tac-toe. It's turn-based. Player, Each player gets a turn, and then their opponent gets a turn. So we'll be switching or toggling that back and forth, and that's what we'll use current player for, and we'll just display who that is, X or O, computer or human. If the current player evaluates to be the player piece, you know, rather than the computer piece, that we know it's the player. We don't know until after runtime whether they're going to choose the first move or not. So we don't know whether they're going to be X or O. So we need a variable for that. So if the current player is the player piece, whatever that might be, X or O, they chose to go first or they did not chose to go first, players move. And then what? Player plays, game board, squares, and player piece. We have to pass on these arguments. Remember that squares that's nine the value of nine game board is our array over here which will hold you know be populated with values of x and zero as the player or opponent chooses it and the player's piece whether they are x or o so let's go see what player plays does and then player plays okay human choosing location you know this function was written 
to process the player's decisions. There's a few things we need to do. We need to make sure that they don't try to, you know, if, if the computer has placed its piece at a position on the board or one of their pieces is there and it's not empty, we cannot allow them to place their piece over that. That's not allowed in tic-tac-toe. So we have to codify the rules. We have to code the logic for that, okay? So that's something that we need to check for. So player's move starts out at negative one, while player's move is greater than squares or player move is less than zero. All right, remember squares is nine. So while, while player's move is greater than nine, if, if they pick a position, you know, there's only nine positions on a tic-tac-toe board, but it would be indexed zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if they pick nine or 10 or 100,000, those are invalid values. We have to validate or mask the input to make sure we get valid input. So if it's greater than the nine, subtracting one would be indexed as eight, but, or if it's less than zero, what if they enter negative five? Well, that's meaningless for a tic-tac-toe board. And remember logical or means if any of these conditions are true, to grade a number that exceeds the number of, of uh, slots on a tic-tac-toe board, to less of a number that is less than the you know invalid or legal move. Legal move is just a short, quick function. And what do we do? We're going to look here and we're going to see a return whether or not uh, that space is empty. So we'll return true if it's empty. And we'll return false if it's got a character there, an X or an O. So it can't be over the number, can't be under the number, and also there can't be a character already there, all right? So as long as that returns false, you know, and none of these are true, if, if any of these are true, it's, it's not a legal move, they can't do that. But if, you know, in this case, if all of these are not, you know, we have to keep them, we have, we have to take their input, you know, for their move. So choose a location zero through eight, your move, and then, We'll give them a little bit of feedback. If they choose too big or too small, that number is outside of valid range. And if legal move returns, uh, you know, if it returns false, hey, you, you can't do that. There's a character already stored there, okay? And whether it's the player's character, whether it's the, you know, computer's character, it doesn't matter. They still can't overwrite it. That's just part of the rules or part of the logic for what we allow the player to do when they place their piece on the tic-tac-toe board. And then we'll just return that, okay? So if it's a legal move, we'll allow them to position their piece there. Uh, your move. And if, if not, we'll give them some feedback, okay? We'll return player's move from where player plays is called, okay? And that's the player plays method. All right, and then that returns their choice. And then we're gonna parse or convert their choice. All right, so I have to shave off uh, extra from read host because there's like a, a terminating or null character on that string value. So we're just doing that here. And then we're gonna set the game board to be the value of their piece, be it X or be it at, you know, O, depending on what they chose at the beginning of the game, okay? Else, it's the computer's move. Well, if it's not the player's move, it's the computer's move. And the logic for the computer plays has to be different because we're not just checking to see whether or not it's a legal move and that the computer's not gonna try to overwrite a character that's already there or choose you know, some value outside the range of a valid tic-tac-toe board, but we also have to somehow give the computer the logic or the algorithm for how to win the game of tic-tac-toe. How does it win? It has to get one of those winning combinations, horizontally, vertically, or diagonally, right? So we're gonna go call computer plays. And the logic will be different from player plays. Let's go look at computer plays and see what happens. So we take in board, all right? There's our array, our tic-tac-toe board, multidimensional array, squares, nine, the player piece and the computer piece. Computer choosing a location. And I tried to comment this out to make this more transparent and verbose and, and you know easy to follow. If the computer can win on next choice, then make that choice. 
well, how do we code whether or not the computer can win? Remember, we had those, those winning combinations, right? So for x in range, and for the number of squares, 9, if it's a legal move, if there's not a piece there, remember what legal move does? It just returns true if the space is empty, but false if not, you know? So if the space is empty, if legal move, if that's true, then board x is computer. And we're going to check for a winner. We're not necessarily going to permanently put our piece there yet, you know, the computer, but the computer is going to check and it's going to cycle through all those winning patterns. Remember what check for a winner does? Goes through all the winning patterns, horizontally, vertically, and diagonally. Okay. And if check for the winner, if remember that check for winner re returns either the player's piece or the computer's piece, if either one of them has any of those winning patterns. And if that's the case, then we're going to return X. Okay. And that'll be the computer's piece. That's the terminate runtime. It's dynamic. We don't know before runtime whether it's going to be X or O. So hence the need for the variable. So in this case, you know, whatever that piece is, uh, if it's a legal move, we'll make that move. And then after the computer makes that move, we'll check and see if it has any winning combinations. And if so, return X. Otherwise, we're done checking that choice if, if it can't make a winning move. And so we'll undo it. And it's just going to keep doing that, checking for a winner. It's going to go through every single square and check to see if if it adds its piece there, will it hit one of those winning combinations that we return from in the check for a winner method. Okay, so it's, it's not actually putting that on the game board, but just like a human would. You know, a human would go through in their mind and their head, they would go through every possible winning combination and say, hey, if I place up my piece here, will I get it vertically? Will I get it horizontally? Will I get it diagonally? Well, this is how we teach the computer to do that. This is how we tell the computer how to do that. Okay. Um, now, the way we implement our level of difficulty, if easy is true, the computer will not try to block the player's winning move. It's only going to look for a combination where it itself could get a winning move you know, from, from all the possible winning combinations, but it's not going to try to actively block the player. However, if this is turned off, if easy is set to false, it's not just going to try to get a winning move itself, but if, if it can't, by placing a piece on the board, get a winning move, then the next best thing is to block its opponent, right? If you can't win by placing your next piece on a tic-tac-toe board, then the next best thing is look for any winning moves that your opponent might have and block those winning moves. See? So in this case, we're going to go through and for y in the range of the number of squares, 9, it, we're going to we want to check, make sure that it's a legal move. And then we're going to check the player and we're going to check for a winner and look at all the possible winning combinations of the player's piece. And if we have any winning combinations, we're going to want to, you know, the computer's going to want to place its piece there to block the player. All right. So done checking this choice and then we'll undo it. All right. So we threw that on the board, but again, we're not permanently placing our piece, our pieces on the board yet. This is just the, the computer. It's the way we code for the computer to go through in its mind and look at all of its winning combinations and if it can't win look at all the players winning combinations and if it finds one place its piece there and block the the player from that winning combination if easy is set to be false and not true and if no one can win on the next choice if neither the computer nor the player can win on the next choice pick the best open square and you could modify this code and change it to be anything you want but you know a lot of people start at the center square then you might start at the top left corner of the board or the bottom right corner of the board, you know, wherever you could play with this. You could come up with all sorts of initial values, but there, there's three basic. All right. Does it have a winning move? If not, can it block the player from having a winning move if the difficulty is set to normal and not easy? Or if that's if neither one of those is the case, you know, say you're first starting out the game and the computer gets the first move, then how do you want 
to define the squares it chooses to be most advantageous when it starts. And the logic is the same there. So for all of the squares in the array, you want to make sure it's a legal move, and we'll try that. And if it's if it's a legal move, if the space is empty, and the value will be returned as true, we'll return choice. All right. So all of that is how the computer plays. So let's go back up to our original calling method. Way up here. All right. That's how the the computer plays. And then it will return. All right. So in this case, n will be what gets returned there. And then the computer piece, whether it's x or whether it's o, will then be placed on the game board. As long as it's not a tie, as long as there's still an empty space, OK? And then display game board does the same thing, right? That's just a module of code. It takes care of, so we can reuse all this code. You know, by breaking this up into modules of functions and making it more modular, we can just reuse uh, the, all that code to do whatever we want, need to do. Display a tic-tac-toe board, whatever. Don't want to reinvent the wheel if we don't have to, right? If, if we code something, we want to be able to reuse it as much as we can. So sort of the idea behind polymorphism, behind classes, behind creating and writing your code and functions in Python. OK, so we'll display the game board. And we're just going to toggle. If current player is player piece, then, you know, if it was the player's turn, now it's the computer's turn. Otherwise, if the current player, if it was, then it was the computer, then the next player is the player. So just, this just toggles, this if else structure here just toggles back and forth between the computer and the player, giving them each a turn because tic-tac-toe is a turn-based game. And finally, display winner. We just want to display winner here. We're going to check for a winner, okay? And that's when this condition is no longer true. We've either tied or we've returned X or O as a winner. We fall out of scope here. And we're just going to go call check for a winner again and it's going to go through and look at the computer piece and the player piece and display the winner and we'll exit the game. OK, so hopefully that's hopefully that's straightforward there. Um, we've gone through all the, the different methods here. Display winner. Let me go up here. Display winner. We call it from our main function. And it takes the results of check for a winner. And we're just saying, look, if what gets returned is, is you know, and passed down as a parameter or as an argument, um, if the winner is the computer piece, we're going to display, uh, you know, in this case, the NPC opponent wins this match. Computer wins the game. Sorry, player loses. If the winner is the player piece that gets returned from check for a winner, the player wins. Else, hey, T was returned. The game ended in a tie. We ran out of empty spaces on the tic-tac-toe board, and neither the player nor the computer won. So all those possibilities, let's play the game and see what it looks like. All right, so in our introduction function, here's how our board is indexed, 0 through 8. So look at our rows and columns, our possible wins. Do you want your NPC opponent to be more intelligent or more simple? We'll choose intelligent this time. And piece of it be more difficult to beat. Do you want the first move? I'm going to say yes. I want the first move. Okay, you take the first move. You are X. Computer is O. So that's dynamic at runtime. That's decided. Here's our empty board. I'm going to, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm going to choose 4. And I'll, you know, I'll choose the center square. So the computer chooses 0, the first one. And it's pulling it from that array of initial best moves. It couldn't put its piece here because legal move returned false when it checked all the empty squares. So it picks whatever we set up in that array for its first initial best move. So it picks this. My turn, what if I chose something outside the array? What if I tried to do 12? That number is outside of the valid range of 1 through 8. Hence, that's why we need our, you know, our masking there. What if I chose negative 5? That number's outside of a valid range. I have to choose a valid range on the board. So let's say I want to go down here and try for a vertical win or here. I'll do 0, 1. Okay, we'll choose 1 on the board. And see the computer blocks me. Because I'm not playing at the easy level, the computer couldn't get a win in that move. 
but it checked my moves and it realized, hey, if I don't block the player, then on the, their next turn, they're going to get a winning move here. So it cycles through the whole board and it blocks me. Okay, where do I want to move? Um, I'm going to try vertical, so 0, 1, 2. Place my piece there. And again, the computer goes through all the possible winning combinations and says, well, I have to block the player here. If I don't, then on the next turn, being turn-based, they're going to win. They're going to place their piece here, and they'll win vertically on the tic-tac-toe board. Okay, so let's try 0, 1, 2, 3. I'll put it in 3 next time. And in this case, sorry, the player loses, right? Why? Because the computer went through and said, hey, I got a, I got a winning combination here horizontally. All I got to do is put my piece there. NPC opponent wins this match. All right. Let's try again. And I'll, we'll do intelligent. And I'll say, yeah, I'll make the first move. Enter to continue. Four. And we'll just go through here and uh, and computer blocks me and zero one two three four five six computer blocks me and let's look at eight and again computer blocks me and then there's only one remaining square in this case. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Let's do five there. Neither the player nor the NPC wins. This game, it ends in a tie. All right, that's another combination. Let's run it again. And uh, this time, I'll choose simple. So if I do that, we're going to leave out that middle block of logic. So the computer will still look for a way to place its piece on the board in, in a winning combination. But it's going to leave out that second block of logic it's not going to check to see if i have a winning move and then try to block me so this will make the game easier do i want the first move i'll say yes i want the first move okay i'm x computer is zero i'll start in the center and zero one and then see it didn't block me so now i can if i want to let's see zero one two three four five six seven Game over. Exit going to take the third player wins. NPC loses. But I cheated because I robbed the computer of that second block of logic where, like a human opponent, it would normally try to block me in any winning pattern that I might have in the game. So this is just kind of a fun game that can give you a lot of experience and practice with lots of different Python topics and structures. Uh, and as always, this code is hosted on GitHub. So feel free to download the code. Uh, the links are posted below the video.